right, hello everyone, and welcome to the sixth session of the Avenger Group. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of announcements, other than, uh, as I've already told my players, this will be primarily a uh, lower decks and or uh, player-driven session. So, could be an hour, could be three hours, who knows? It's really dependent on the players. Uh, but without any further ado, uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. And unlike normal, where we begin with a captain's log, uh, we're just going to say that... Uh, after the excitement uh, that was your last mission, the one where you basically found out that there was some other sort of species or some other uh, entity out there that was trying to modify vessels and otherwise use them as honey bait or what are they called? Honey traps. Um, you, uh, you rescued one of the Vulcan Science Academy vessels. Uh, you turned it over to uh, Vulcan for further study, and then you kind of went on your merry way. Uh, not only just because the captain is not here today, but because your first officer will be joining you next week, hopefully. Um, so today, we're just going to start. It's somewhere near the end of April, uh, 2162. Uh, the date is fuzzy for a reason. And uh, I'm just going to sort of open this the sort of queue, and whoever would like to start with a scene can certainly do so. Oh, since we're kind of just in the lull, Moose has invited a lot of people that uh, do want to attend to the mess hall. He is having a good old-fashioned cookout. He so, is, uh, as I uh, as I get that set up, we'll use the uh, the conference room because that's what I think it's actually supposed to be. Um, out of curiosity, are we talking like like actual food, like on a grill, or? Oh yeah, he's he's commandeered the kitchen for this. Ah. And uh, he's having people bring out uh, Albertan tradition food, which is just steak. Mm. Lots and lots of different styles of steak. <laughs> I, it, well, I have to ask, is there any poutine? Oh, yes. There's poutine uh, with... Uh, there's actually two types, too. Uh, there's uh, Donaire poutine as well. I had, I had no idea there were types of poutine. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, uh, Donaire poutine is fries, gravy, cheese curds, Donaire sauce, and Donaire meat. It is delish. And he's just having a bunch of stuff set up. He's just having fun. Okay. So I'm going to say for the sake of argument that uh, all the players that are here today are going to show up. Uh, did you want any supporting characters to show up? Uh, Adams. Uh, no, Anderson. 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 Okay. Uh, Apparently I still didn't fix his tokens, so I will do that. Pretty much anyone can show up if they want. Uh, we can have uh, Jensen as well. You know, she can get some grub. Mm -hmm. uh, remind me, what rank is Anderson again? Is he a crewman? I forget. Anson. Anson. Anson Anderson. All right. And yeah, Jensen will be there shortly, but you can go ahead and start the scene if you so wish. He'll uh, come on out and uh, put two big... Heavy stakes in front of Morris and Rollins. But, all right, we got yourself mashed potatoes, baked potatoes. We got yourself some fries, scalloped potatoes as well. Bacon bits, bacon strips, bacon slices. Do you ever eat anything healthy? He just I mean, smiles and flexes like, ah, you know. I do, well, may but help today's a cheat day. <laughs> Makes me concerned for your cholesterol, Lieutenant. Oh, it's my cheat day. Come now. Oh, dig in. I hope you like it. I also got some chicken. And I know for our Vulcan friends, I have some interesting salads prepared for them as well. Where is he, by the way? He's looking around for Arnold now. <laughs> Oh, well, since you mentioned him, uh -oh. uh, he walks in with a uh, bottle of champagne and says, Well, I hope I'm not too late. I was having some real problems finding this thing. And he holds up the bottle. Ah, uh, Arnold, it's good to see you again. I got something special for you. By special, do you mean that you prepared a special dish for me? Because if so, that is very good. He'll, uh take the covering off of a plate he has and he'll put it down and it's uh, basically a bunch of assorted fruit, some of it steamed, some of it broiled um, and there's a vegetarian casserole as well in there 
And uh, he's just got a smile. I was like, I got this. It's vegetarian steak. Not made with meat, but sure tastes as close as I can get it. He just sort of arcs an eyebrow at you and says, You know, uh, Lieutenant, I usually do not consume meat, but since you've gone to such an effort, it would be logical for me to not have any. Excellent. And uh, he'll sit down and smile. I was like, Dig in. Hmm. I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised you're willing to eat meat, Arnold. Uh, I mean, I, I you you're normally vegetarian, right? Like this this isn't a tuber. Well, it's it's a vegetarian steak, but it tastes as close as it can get to steak. Well, but it's not a but it's not, not a tuber. No, no, no. Uh, and he actually goes for like the legit bacon. <laughs> hmm. Ah. Uh. I also got two I, types of I got it. I, okay, good. It. Someone's with me here. <laughs> 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 I wasn't trying to indulge. I was like, I'm just going to let that... that you know, we're just going to let it soar away from us. <laughs> oh. So yeah, uh, you guys are uh, having a good time. You're uh, enjoying the food that has been prepared. and Probably about uh, five or ten minutes after everyone started to eat, uh, Jensen, uh, well, I would say that uh, at least uh, the Master Chief for Liza and Lieutenant Moose, uh, you've noticed that Jensen has gone through two plates already. Like, she's really chowing down. He'll just look at her and smile, go over and take her plate, grab two big more steaks, and just toss on her plate and hand it to her. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant. Uh, I was just about to do that myself. Oh, you're a growing girl. You need some more food, right? Uh, I'm going to pretend that you said that in a nicer way, but yes. <laughs> oh, come on. You remind me of my younger sister. Is no, that it's true. I have, to, I have to lock away my tangerines. Is, 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 I, I obviously don't know your sister. Is that a, is that a good thing? Yeah. She's actually stronger than me at sometimes. Gary. She just kind of looks you up and down and says, Honestly, uh, the only person I think that could beat you in a fight is Arnold over there. And Arnold, Arnold goes, You know, we should probably spot at some point, Lieutenant. I'm very curious to see who'd win. Oh, I don't want to break that pretty jaw of yours, Arnold. I mean, it would be Rollins, but... Arnold just gives a very hearty laugh. Ah, so everyone enjoying it? Yeah, thanks. Uh, where did you requisition all this stuff from? From home. Uh, we're all allotted about 15 pounds worth of personal possessions, so 10 of it was meat. <laughs> Is this You're most dead. of it, then? A fair bit. A couple more pounds left for my personal stash. Most of that, though, is jerky. I got chicken jerky, beef jerky, ostrich jerky. When you, you say, say ostrich jerky, he... Yeah, but Lutzer kind of raises his eyebrows at that. Yeah, ostrich jerky. Uh, also, back home, I would have... Uh, right now, if it was a cheat day, I would have an omelet with an ostrich egg. Crack one of those, that's all I need. They must be fairly large eggs, then. Pretty good size, and like you'll motion with his hands how big they are. Big hmm. creatures, if they kick you too, you're done. Yeah, it's you know, spice of life, right? You gotta try a bunch of different things. The only thing I, I didn't get a chance to bring was um, yeah, some deer jerky. Didn't get a chance to bring that. Jensen kind of looks at you questioningly and says, you actually like venison? Well, I'm a meat man. <laughs> yeah, but venison, it's so gamey. Well, if you know how to chew really good, you can eat through pretty much anything. Especially yeah. after surviving on rations. <laughs> the key is you mix in other meats with venison meat to make it less gamey. I just remember uh, back home. Uh, I, 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 of course, I, uh, I am from uh, Mars Colony, so didn't really have a whole lot of venison running around on Mars. But uh, 
whenever it came in, whenever my uncle from Earth came to visit, uh, he'd always bring a couple coolers full of venison and tired it like it was the best thing since sliced bread, and uh, it was not. <laughs> yeah, I think generally it's, you know, they enjoyed hunting so much <laughs> that they want to make everything as grand about it as they can. I actually had a little bit of trouble adjusting to earth meat. The uh, the Centauri deer were uh, mostly what I ate, but uh, to be frank, people didn't really... It took a while before we really figured out how to cook it right. Well, that's the fun thing with uh, hunting animals. I was always taught to, if you hunt it, you have to use every part of it, no matter what. And so, father would take me out, we'd go hunting... Sure enough, we used every part. Uh, full of respect for the creature. It's not just a trophy. It's For a good portion of my younger life, we didn't have a replicator. We went off land. It was fun. It kind of changed though when I got injured. <sighs> and uh, Arnold speaks up and says, Sir, I have a question if you do not mind. Go ahead. You said that you use all of the animal. What did you do with the eyeballs? Well, have you ever had toast? I do not see where this logic is going. Sometimes we didn't have strawberry jam, so... And Jensen, jam. like, just literally, like, shivers, like, almost recoiling in her seat, like, eh. <laughs> Oh, no, Florissa does the same. He almost, like, physically gags. Yeah, Rollins also has a <laughs> disgusted face. Moose just has his biggest grin on his face ever. He's just laughing. Like, oh, come on. We all have been through zero-G training. You can't have a little bit of a stronger stomach than that? Lieutenant, I say this with all due respect. That was a poor attempt at humor. <laughs> Oh, you gotta it's, have fun somehow, right? You, you might even say that's not a humor. <sighs> Just trying too hard. I, 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 I nominate to uh, give the GM threat for that. No, yes. but Jens, that size is in character as Jensen kind of says, and this is why I've considered changing roommates. <laughs> oh, Anderson, how are you liking it? Uh, very good, sir. And he's just sitting there piling it in, enjoying. Trying to stay out of everyone's <laughs> attention. So, we've been on the ship for a little bit now. And I know that uh, we're going to be stuck working together for a while. So that's why I wanted to do this, was have a little sit down, chat, and get to know everyone. Rollins, I know you decently. But what about you, Morris? For Liza? Uh, well, what do you want to know? What do you feel like sharing? Hmm. What are your hobbies? Um, well, I, I'm a drummer. Um, I don't really get to do that so much anymore. Not on real drums. Um, hell, this is the longest I've been with, without fresh air in, ever. Oh, what, farm boy? Just always out on the planet? Um, grew up on a colony world. Um, my... Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, and I'm I'm assuming Moose is asking this question to everyone in the room. Yeah, he, it was an open question to anyone. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, back on Ryza, and even now, I still do uh, quite a bit of reading in my free time, but I was mostly doing medical training, so it was that and reading. Those were the two things I've done really 
ever since I was about 10 years old, thereabouts. And the reason I decided to enlist rather than gain a commission because I felt like I would have been relearning things that I already knew. But should the captain see fit to give me a field commission, then, well, that's fine by me. Well, no, Master Chief, as you know, we're the ones that actually work for a living. <laughs> Indeed, Arnold. Indeed. It's interesting. I attended the academy for a couple of years before I dropped out and went to West Point. And, well, after the whole Romulan War, they uh, saw fit to give me a commission without the need to go back to school because, uh, well, I know more than they are teaching. Uh, question for the, oh, sorry, go ahead. I guess question for the GM. Mm -hmm. for the GM, um, did anyone serve with my dad? I think I said he was on the Endeavor. Uh, I'm going to say that that is at your discretion. Um, oh, I'll, I'll just uh, well, uh, Master Chief, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, my my dad was also uh, a uh, non commissioned officer. Uh, Petty Chief Colin Morris. I don't know if any of y'all worked with him. He was on the Endeavor. Um, I personally didn't work with him. Whenever I served briefly in the Earth Romulan War myself, I was part of a crew called the USS Hades. But I've heard a bit about uh, a Petty Officer Colin Morris, but uh, never had got the chance to work with him. Uh, he was a good music teacher. Um, I assume that's where you got your love of music from, if I may project a bit. Um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't hurt. <laughs> um, well, bo both of my parents really, um... Uh, were it wasn't their job or anything. Uh, he was, you know, early early Starfleet. Um, actually, one of the first Starfleet Reserve members. Uh, he settled down pretty early, and then uh, uh, mom was an engineer for Yo Yo Dine. Hmm. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at my backstory right now. It's like to see if I need to talk about any of this. This is just gonna look at everyone and smile like, "Hey, look, we're chatting." Instead of about work, we're trying to get to know each other. Well, I know I've asked you guys some questions. If you want to ask me any, feel free. Well, Arnold at least speaks up and says, "Lieutenant, I'm always curious. What exactly is your bench?" Oh, on Earth, boat. 350 if it's a good day. It's been a little bit difficult adjusting to doing some presses and lifts with the leg. Can't get a right footing with it. Hurts. But I wouldn't mind uh, taking you up on a challenge at some point. And uh, Arnold just looks expectedly at the doctor on this one. I don't see why you shouldn't do it. I actually wouldn't mind watching. I think during my prime, though, I got close to 500. But that was... Found out that one of the uh, students was messing around with the gravity. Made it a couple points lighter. I was not happy when I found that out. <laughs> Uh, out of character, is this pounds or kilograms that Moose is talking about? Pounds. Gotcha. So quite a bit. Yeah. If you think I'm big now, you should have seen the photos when I was younger. <laughs> Shirts would just rip.
I oh, assume that's why you wear the uniform a little looser. Well, I actually got the uniform adjusted because of, well, it bunches at the back and underneath the pits, and when I'm reaching up, I just rip the arms right free. Change Jensen, it a bit. like, midway through stakes, is, he's not lying, I've seen him do it twice already. I wanted to give someone a high five and I ripped my whole entire arm sleeve. <laughs> that's almost impressive. Well, it is impressive, actually. I mean, it'd be a little bit more impressive if you just, you know, figured out a way not to do that. Well, Discipline did. can be a very, very beneficial thing. Discipline has its places and its uses. When you want to give someone a high five, why be soft about it? They did a good job, you want to show them they did a good job. Have some excitement. <laughs> and it is right about then uh, that, uh, you know, everybody starts getting calls to, you know, you're needed either in engineering or sick bay or back on the bridge. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the dinner slash lunch, whatever we're calling it, uh, does come to a close. Uh, hmm. so next up, we're actually going to go straight to the bridge. Where, uh, again, the captain is currently indisposed doing something else. So that means Rollins, you're in charge. And yeah, Rollins, uh, you know, it's a very quiet alpha shift. That's why you really could get away for the lunch slash dinner in the first place. And uh, Morris, same kind of thing. You know, you sit at your uh, helm position and nothing uh, nothing really major is going on. Uh, but uh, as you, you know, kind of look around and more or less find, uh, find ways to kill time, uh, Morris, I'd like you to roll me an insight and con. Uh, difficulty three, please. Okay. Um, hmm... Difficulty three. Do I have an applicable focus here? Do you have anything related to astrophysics or spatial phenomena? I have astro navigation. Uh, I'll let it apply. Okay. Um, I since I don't know what it's about, I'm not gonna give you any threat. Okay. In Psycon. is the ship assisting? Uh, let's see. Oh, right. I have to put Klein on the bridge. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I would say that, uh, the ship could assist you. The ship is going to be rolling a computers and con. Okay. So if someone wants to, uh, grab the sheet. I'll go ahead and grab the ship. All right. Uh, if that's the case, then I can re-roll either one of mine or the ship's dice. I right, rolled as the Avenger. What was it for the ship again? Computers and con. Okay. All right. Hey, right. that's um, uh, that's two successes. So I'm assuming you're going to reroll that nineteen. Yeah, because we need another one. So. Hey. Three successes, that's all you need. So, uh, what you note is that for some reason, the immediate space ahead of the ship uh, has become rather dense with interstellar dust and other sort of fine particles. Uh, definitely not like nebula level, but enough that it might be some concern. Um, I'll simply state out loud, um, increasing... Power to navigational deflectors. We've seemed to enter a higher density area of space. Boop, 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 boop. Anything we need to worry about? Uh, unclear. Uh, I'm going to start scanning up a little further ahead. Klein would be doing the same. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, whoever wants to take the lead on this one, it's going to be a reason science uh assisted by the ship sensors science uh i'm going to say that the difficulty here is going to be a four okay 
Could Actually, you know you what? Do... Let's let's spend some threat to make it a difficulty five. Oh great. Um, untapped potential. I have to spend. Um, oh, oh, that's right. I have to spend threat to er, uh, momentum to get that. Oh, I can get. Oh, I can do it if I buy it with threat. Um. Hmm. So if I do that, I'd have untapped potential and technical expertise. Um. See we here. could do it. So maybe like Morse can take the lead, and I can have Klein assist if that works. Okay. Um. Yeah, I've got a thirteen for reason science. His reason science is a 15, but he doesn't have any determination or anything like that. Okay. Um, I, I think I want to give the GM one threat just for a third die. Okay. Um, or it would be th if you're assisting. Yeah. So if you're if you're assisting, we've got four dice between the two of us, and the ship's die is not as good, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've got a reroll on those four, so I think, yeah, I think just one threat. Okay. Um, any of Klein's focuses apply here. He has astronomical phenomena, botany, and quantum eh, quantum mechanics. Uh, two of those would apply. One okay. of them's botany. One of them's botany. <laughs> <laughs> it appears there are some flowers interfering. It's Ooh, fine. We can re-roll that. We can re-roll that. <laughs> and then I, is the ship assisting? Oh, Lord. Yeah, it, unless the uh, unless the ship crits here, I don't think it's possible for you to uh, to succeed this. Uh, computer well, con. Uh, it would be for this one a sensor's science. The, does the ship have focus or not? Oh, it always, it always. has focus. Okay, good to know. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I could spend my determination here, but it only reroll my own dice, right? Yeah, you you can't reroll any of the uh, Avengers or Kleins, and right, you well, would have to crit I, both to pass here. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Uh. If could I get a sense of why I'm failing? Why why we're failing the roll? Like technologically. I will say that, but the moment I say it, it will sort of reveal a lot of things that are about to happen. Uh, but first, okay. let's re-roll that complication, because you do have the free re-roll. Right. All right, let's do that. The only reason I was asking to see if maybe, like, a value applied. Oh, I see. see. If I would, or to see if I would want to try. Um, all right. Yeah, recent science. Okay, so mm. now we are at the part where you could technically pass this difficulty five, but you would have to crit. Yeah, so that's a four in 20 chance. It's a one in five. Mm hmm. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Do it. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Um,. There's, I don't believe in them possible. I'll say for sake of argument, looking at your values, that one of them does apply. All right. Um. Yeah, why not? Um, well, four and five chances is why not, but we're doing it. All right. And I mean, you could crit fish, so you don't have to re-roll just one. You could re-roll two. Ah! Uh does that help? I don't know if it does. Well, I'm I mean, just going to do one. I'm okay. just going to do one. Just the one? Um, yeah. So close. Unfortunately, that is just four. Uh, so what's going to happen is uh, you guys will find what you were looking for with this, this difficulty five, but a moment too late. Um, and the moment that between Klein and Morris that you see it, uh, again, it's it's there's just no time to react. Uh, sensors report that there is a quantum filament uh, that is right off the starboard bow, and then seconds later, the entire ship rocks and lists and otherwise decelerates from warp as just this massive tear in the hull uh, opens up and knocks every single system offline. And uh, you're all thrown about your ship, uh, even those of you in different parts of the ship. 
uh, the lighting goes dark and not even emergency lighting cuts online. Uh, the entire ship just goes dark and starts listing in space. Hmm. I imagine Moose would be um, up on a catwalk on near the engine core. Mm -hmm. uh, would he have to roll to like make sure he doesn't go flying off it? Yeah, roll me a uh, fitness con difficulty two. Yeah, no, you're going to go off of it, which means if I roll an effect here, uh, you will be injured. You are not injured. Woo. <laughs> I just landed on my ass really upset. <laughs> landed on the tailbone. Ouch. Yeah, that's going to hurt. But uh, before we start cutting around to places on the ship, let's uh, deal with the bridge. So bridge, that has all happened. Uh, no consoles are working. No emergency lights. In fact, the only lighting you have is... Uh, from flashlights that are stored uh, in strategic locations around the bridge. Uh, oh, and since... Uh, well, hold on. So since Deku brought it up, uh, yeah, gravity plating's offline, too. Oh, great. So, so I fall... I like you, Deku. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine I fall, I hit the ground, and then as I bounce, I just start drifting upwards. Mm -hmm. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> So sorry, uh, what was the question that you had, Rollins? Oh, do any of the communications, like do the comms work at all? Uh, I will say for sake of argument that uh, internal ship communication will work, but definitely not external. Actually, you know what? I'm going to roll the dice here. You know what? I won't roll the dice. I'll just spend threat. Uh, inter internal communications, also offline. Oh. Well, um, what can we do from here? <laughs> my console's not uh, responding, Lieutenant. Um, I, I'm just like kind of holding on to it with my hands. I guess my feet are above me. I'm trying to pull myself back into somewhat of a seat seating position. Mm -hmm. Maybe using these handy uh, rails that are next to me. That's what they're there for. Oh. I thought they were used for standing stoically and... <laughs> so, I mean, so... I, I guess let's see if we can maybe get the turbo lift open? Like, we're gonna have to... There's not much we can do without our consoles, right? Uh, I would say that if you had tricorders on hand, which again, like flashlights, they would be stashed strategically around the bridge... Um, you could start doing tricorder scans, but okay. again, without main systems, you are kind of in the dark. So I'll, I'll like kick over to wherever tricorder is, and mm -hmm. um, you know, try to get one to Klein and Morris, our science people. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Well, and I guess, I guess we could just both flip them open and get to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's find out what's going on. Are we still near that whatever that was? So, uh, I would like you to roll me whichever one of you wants to take the lead here. Another reason science. Uh, the difficulty here is going to be a three, uh, and you can't assist one another on this. Um, what were your focuses again? Uh, let's see. We'll check. Uh, astronomical phenomena, botany, and quantum mechanics. Hmm. Uh, I think it's pretty much even either way. I'll assist you, I think. Okay. Yeah. The reason science. Mm. I'll give you a threat to get a third die. Oh. Okay. Sorry, one thing. I mm. forgot to roll for untapped potential. Oh, yeah, you should roll because that could give you momentum. And you threat, and nothing. Nothing happens. Alright, good solid start. Two successes. And my assist. Alright, you succeed. 
So, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, quantum filaments, uh, they are something that showed up in the disaster episode of TNG. Uh, long story short, they are a astrophysical phenomenon that are hundreds of meter long, but they have almost no mass, which is why you didn't really detect any until you were right on top of it. Um, now, good news, bad news here. Good news is that the filament has stopped tearing a hole through the ship. The bad news is, if your tricorder readings are correct, um, the filament is still buried within part of the hull, meaning that if you don't move in a certain way, you're just going to cause even more damage. And Klein will just kind of look at the results and be like, oh, son of a bitch. I believe we need to prioritize our RCS thrusters and getting the controls for those back online. All right, so we need to get that information down to engineering. And speaking of engineering... Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys in engineering have, uh, you know, bounced off of walls, bounced off the floor, and they're just sort of drifting around, and... Same story that was on the bridge. The warp core is entirely offline. Anderson? Yeah. All right, Jensen? Uh, here, sir. Helix? Uh, you would note that Helix is the only one that is still standing on the deck plate and just kind of looks up at you and says, Do you not have the ability to stick to deck plates? I mean, it's this, this seems like a crucial thing to have. Special equipment is required. It's not built into our DNA. Well, it sucks to be organic, I guess. Yes, you know, it he does. Looks, you know, Helix, I'm tempted to take you up on your offer for the new leg. Anyways, everyone okay? Well, the warp core isn't. Yeah, I, I'm fine, sir. Uh, what, what do we do about the warp core here? I mean, it, it literally looks like it, it's going to need a cold start. Uh, Veronica will be fine. Uh, let's check on everyone else first, though. We want to make sure we still have a fully intact chip. Find out what happened. And uh, he'll just slowly drift on to a wall panel and poke it. Okay. Yeah, doesn't work. Okay. Standard procedure. Let's go investigate, see if there's any breaches. Uh, get on EVA suits, Anderson. Don't need you being sucked out of the space. Yes, sir. Jensen, you do the same. I want you guys to make your way up to the bridge. Take the long way. Walk up everything, go up every junction you can. Make sure if you spot any damage, you mark it off and you record the location. I'm going to go head up to the bridge directly. And uh, Helix says, and what do you want me to do? I mean, I can just sit here looking pretty, but... That sounds like an excellent idea, but you're going to be coming with me. Ah. Well then. Suppose we should get started. And yeah, uh, there's a suit-up sequence. As you find your EV suits, get in them, and... You start heading off in your various ways. Uh, but, uh, since you did sort of quote-unquote split the party, it means we have opportunities for roles. Uh, and part of this means that you guys are activating both Anderson and Jensen, which means you can improve them as per normal supporting character roles. Or Ooh. rules. Um, so, uh, either Anderson or Jensen is going to be doing a reason engineering uh, difficulty 2. Uh, you know what? No, let's make it a difficulty three because you can assist each other on this. And you might want to apply the uh, supporting character enhancement before rolling because you could give them a focus, you could give them a talent, uh, you could give them a value. Uh, you can also increase one of their attributes by one or one of their disciplines by one. So, like, Anderson already got a talent... Um couple times ago but this is the the next time they yeah i was gonna say so it's every time you activate them that you can add something new oh nice uh-huh all 
or it might increase an attribute. <laughs> Just remember, it can't go above 12. Well, I was going to say, like, reason. And while he's debating that, what do you guys want to do with Jensen? Hmm. Uh, what? Okay. I wouldn't mind giving her talent. Uh, I know my ship. It's a solid talent to have, especially for an engineer. I'm on board with that. Actually, I haven't. Since this is supporting character stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I add anything to Klein. I'm not sure if that stuff on the bridge was count as an activation per se. Uh, I would say you did roll for him, so yes, that counts as an activation. Okay, I know are what there, talent I'm giving him. Are there any unique talents that Jensen has available to her because she's a literal demigod? Uh, I would say <laughs> that uh, if you want to give her the talent of uh, part Dowd and just literally write part Dowd, she can begin to, I don't know, uh, roll for such things. Oh, I jest. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like that thing where uh, Beta Zeds can take empathy or telepathy, but they don't have to. Right. Uh, I say for the situation, I know my ship's pretty good because it gives her a uh, less difficult or a reroll? Which one? I think it's less difficult. Let's take a look. One thirty-six. I think it is. Le or it might be like an add a bonus d twenty. Yeah, it's one of the two. All right. Let's see. I know my ship. Whenever you attempt a task to determine the source of a technical problem with your ship, add one bonus d twenty. Oh well, now I want that. <laughs> uh, you do need an engineering of four or higher. Yeah, Anderson has it. The Jensen. Hmm. I still haven't used my arc from last time. I'm stumped what to pick. You got an arc already? Yeah. Dang. He got injured a lot. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get injured. You know, old soldier. Old habits. Mm -hmm. oh. that um, what you picking? Yeah, I'm fine with giving Jensen uh, I know my ship. Okay. Second. Alright, we'll go ahead and add that to her sheet. Um, I would say that she doesn't get that talent if she's assisting. If she does the main role, then she does get it. Okay. What and are again, we rolling uh, the reason? Reason engineering difficulty three. For just investigating? Uh, this is to see what you guys get on your tricorders on your way up to the bridge and, you know, assessing damage, basically. So I would have a 12. Uh, so would Jensen. Uh, well, she has. She, now she's since, she has, since she has the talent, should, should we probably just let her take the lead then? She also has yeah. emergency repair, system maintenance, and modular and design. Modeling and design. Yep, that means she does have a focus. All right, yeah. yeah that'll be good, all assist. All right, I'll roll for Jensen. You know, giving her a teaching moment. Why don't you go ahead, Jensen? <laughs> I got you. Very nice. That's already <laughs> four successes. Ooh, that's really good. So just need to see Anderson's. Good, good job there, Jensen. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, you guys get a momentum. And what Anderson and Jensen find, of course, they're going to have to tell someone uh, when they arrive on the bridge. But uh, they notice several things. Uh, the first is that they can confirm uh, what certain people on the bridge have already found out, that uh, one of the quantum filaments that hit you is still embedded into the ship. 
Uh, so you will have to be very careful about extricating yourself. Uh, the other thing you notice is that right now you guys are considered to have two breaches to structure. Um, so if that comes up, you know, just remember that you have two breaches to structure. Uh, the I'll other thing it. that is of note, or at least Jensen would know, is that uh, she is seeing a problem with the antimatter storage pods. Uh, but I will basically speak through her uh, once you get to the bridge. Now, uh, in terms of Moose and Helix, uh, you're saying you're taking the most direct route. So does that mean Jeffrey's tubes, ladders, etc.? Or are you going to try and take, say, like a turbo lift? Well... Since there's no gravity, mm -hmm. uh, Moose is literally just propelling himself through everything. Okay. Um, so, it, if that means to the turbo lift, sure. Yeah, I would say it's pretty easy. You know, the the turbo lifts in a sense of emergency usually lock in place, and you know, going up and down the turbo lift shaft is pretty damn easy. Uh, so we'll say we go back to the bridge, and uh, you would all hear the turbo lift door being opened. And as you direct your flashlights towards that area, uh, out pops one moose. And Bob's your uncle. Ugh. Hello? Hey, we were just about to go look for you. Well, you found me. What'd we hit? It appears uh, that we hit a uh, quantum filament, and uh, some of it's still sitting in our hall. Out of yeah. character, how difficult are those things to remove, per uh, se? They're rather annoying. Uh, in order to basically get yourself out, you're looking at right now a difficulty 5 con task to get out of it. Oh, fun. Yeah, so, I mean, while we're trying to get RCS back up, we're going to need you to start working to plot a, a course to disentangle us. Well, that's going to be tough. Uh, did it actually breach the hull? Well, it's we have no sensors. It's right about now that uh, Jensen and uh, Anderson show up to report that knowledge. Hey, boss. Looks like uh, looks like we got a couple of breaches. Did did you know that we're stuck in a quantum slip? I just told him that. Oh, good. All right. Oh. Uh... Edison, get working on repairing those breaches as best as you can, or stabilize them, reinforce the structural integrity around the sections. We need to re-divert power from those areas. We can't have anything leaking onto it, leaking out or causing any issues, especially if we're going to use the reactionary thrusters. Uh, sir, and this is Jensen speaking, uh, so there is one other thing that I noticed on the way up here. What is it? Well, uh, I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time, so I can't be 100% positive, but the antimatter storage pods somehow have increased in strength. Give your readings to uh, Klein there. Have him investigate with it. And, uh, you sure they've increased and not decreased? Yeah, it's the strangest thing, sir. Almost like getting hit by the filament made it stronger, and it should be the opposite. Alright, let's, uh, with your permission, Captain, I'd like to get a science team and an engineering team looking at this. Might be something we can use later in life. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, absolutely. All right, well, we'll do two things. Shore up structural integrity and get an examination done of those tanks. If we can replicate how it's doing that, man, yeah. make space travel a little bit easier on everyone. And what are we going to need to do to get thrusters? Well, I want to contain any possible leaks. Uh, any power connection points need to be severed. And I'm going to have to do a 
quick diagnostic on the RCS, just to make sure that uh, they're all going to fire smoothly. Uh, I'm going to examine the sensor array as well, make sure we're getting accurate readings. Uh, as a point of order, uh, Helix sort of drifts up behind you, Moose, and says, I just will remind you, Biologics, that uh, your power's offline, so, you know, you might want to yeah. get your life support back running, as much as I would love to see you choking on the floor. Is that something you'd enjoy? Oh, I'm just... sorry, is this not an attempt at humor? Ah. Moose will just put her hand on her head and slowly push her back down with the lack of gravity. <laughs> I was like, I'll get power back up. Uh, I'm going to initiate emergency power first before I bring up the warp core. Uh, Anderson, get those lines cut on those sections. Is there? And Moose will just drift back down to turbo lift. All right. So, uh, so before we... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no it's okay. Okay. Uh, before we start doing the extended task, we're going to go to sick bay because we don't want to leave our good doctor out. All right, so, uh, Doctor, uh, you know, you're sort of floating around again, and you're having deja vu with the last time this happened. Um, oh, I've strapped everything down. I'm safe in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the damnedest thing, because, you know, you're sitting there floating in the darkness, you know, with your flashlight. Uh, you know, your flashlight goes across the sick bay, and then it goes back, and all of a sudden, there's another one of you. Um, okay. And I'm going to pull out my medical tricorder and run some scans. Okay, uh, your duplicate does the same. Uh, if you could roll me a uh, reason medicine <laughs> difficulty one. Okay. He's going to need so many more um... wives now. <laughs> see um the only two i could see applying focus wise uh diagnosis and xenobiology I i'd let it apply sure okay all right hey, that gets that you sense. momentum uh so you and your duplicate have figured out at the same time you are exact copies of one another like almost down to the molecule Is there anything that would be even a remote discrepancy between the two of us? If you spend a momentum, I will answer that question. I will gladly spend that momentum. All right. Then uh, I will say that, uh, you know, you normally wouldn't check this, but uh, there is a slight variance in the quantum signature between the two of you. Okay. Um, I'll kind of look at myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, it appears that you have a different quantum signature from me. I could say the um, same about you. Hmm. If I may ask, are you from a different... What the, Okay, out of care. Does this imply that he's like from a different time? Can imply many things, but unfortunately, I can't answer that that question directly. Okay. Um, do you remember how you got here? As far as I know, I was floating in sick bay. Uh, power out. And next thing I know, you're here. And I can say the exact same thing happened to me. Um. Well, okay, we. Well, and he gets cut off mid sentence because he literally vanishes before you. Okay. Um. I am just going to leave Sick Bay if I can and mm -hmm. go check for any injured. Okay. So again, because uh, graph planning is off, it is a little bit more difficult uh, to get around. But, you know, even before you get out of sickbay, people are already floating in with injuries. Okay, cool. Oh, all right then. I'm assuming that most of them are relatively minor. Mm-hmm. 
I'll just be like, all right, well, uh, let's get to work, and I'll start doing my job. All right. So uh, we'll just go to fear of the mind for this one as people begin to work at various tasks. Uh, this extended task is going to be timed, which means if you do not complete it in time, uh, bad things will start to happen. Uh, but this extended task that we're going to do first is going to represent, excuse me, uh, is going to represent uh, the getting emergency power back online. So uh, the work track is going to be a 12. The magnitude is going to be a 4. The resistance is going to be a 2. And the difficulty to start off with is going to be a 5 because you are trying to cold start everything. So it's a very, very difficult uh, extended task. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is that you have 10 intervals uh, before not having life support starts becoming a problem. And if you need a reminder, uh, every single attempt at an ex at, a at a extended task by default uses two intervals unless you spend a momentum to make it only use one. Uh, now the default task for this is going to be a, uh, I would say a daring engineering, and you can have one other person assist you. Um, but again, because the ship is offline, uh, you know, it, it can't really help you. So I don't have to spend my arc yet, but can I grab a talent? Sure, what do you have in mind? Technical expertise. Solid choice. That's the one that uh, any effects are doubled? Uh, no, technical expertise is whenever you attempt a task assisted by the ship's computers or sensors, uh, you may re-roll 1d20. Oh, is it in nick of time, though? Nick of time, yeah. yeah. In nick of time, whenever you succeed in an engineering or science task as part of an extended task, you score one additional work for every effect rolled. So yes, it is basically vicious one. Right, I'll take that one. Okay. And then there's what miracle workers. If you get one breakthrough, you get another one too. Yep. That was fun. Those two together are pretty gross. <laughs> well, it's about to get gross. Uh, <laughs> so Moose is just gonna be floating around, and he's gonna have uh, Helix join him on this. Because Anderson's off doing structural repair, and Jensen's off with a uh, Klein to. Uh, well, Jensen Klein, I ship it. Uh, check out the anti matter tanks. Okay. All right, so if someone wants to roll for Helix, I think her sheet should be visible to everyone. Uh, again, this is going to be a daring engineering. Uh, warp core mechanics, electric uh, plasma system. I would say both could apply. Yeah, all three could apply. All right. Yeah, I can get Helix. And are you guys okay uh, if I spend the momentum to cut down the interval? Or well, you can do that. Do you have to... I was wondering if you can make that decision after the roll. I'm not I sure. think technically you have to say the interval is uh, before the roll. That way you know it doesn't like... It, oh, I failed, so I want to cut it in half, or kind of a thing. So, uh, okay, because uh, I guess it was my understanding that it's it was one interval to start it, and then if you succeed, it took a second interval. Well, I mean, this I is a be. very this is a very good point, and it doesn't hurt to look it up. So you know, been playing this game for uh, several years, and there's still things that uh, I learn every day. Uh, let's see. So, uh, do, do, do uh, time challenge. Da, 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 da. Each task attempted takes two intervals of time to attempt by default. Characters can spend one momentum on a successful task to reduce this to one interval. And that's the key word here, is that uh, it has to be a successful task. So I've been doing that wrong. Um, now it also says that a complication may cause the task to take longer. And that could mean a single interval added to the task. So, what's the uh, number of successes I need to get for this? You need to get five successes before you can roll on the work track. Okay. What What's the specific thing you're trying to do right now? Uh, he is trying to get emergency power and emergency systems back up and running. Okay. Um, are there things okay. other people could do to make that easier for him? Uh, well, Helix is definitely assisting, uh, basically handing him tools, doing what she can on her end. 
Um, but there's only going to be one assist here. Okay. Or, I mean, I was going to say, like, I don't think Helix is great for this, is she? <laughs> I mean, you can use a different character than Helix, I just need to know which ones you're using. Because, I mean, like, could Anderson be assisting by, as he's going around and rerouting things? Yeah, I'd say if you want Anderson to assist, Anderson can assist. Sure. I, cause I'm sure communicator devices are working. Nope. Like walkie talkie. No. Nope. Like the, the handheld ones? Nope. He spent that threat everyone keeps giving him. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We've. Uh, wait, how much threat have we given? I gave one. He well, starts out with a one. Yeah, I'll say you also okay, remember yeah. I start with some. Alright, so if it's a difficulty five, the assist only gets an extra roll. Mm -hmm. Oh, gives one roll. Um, I'm gonna burn my determination. Okay, what value? Um, I built worse than a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can tell when I made that value, I was watching a certain movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So, and I just have my normal two, so that's two successes already. And then two more dice, uh, focus. Oh... Engineering. Engineering. All right, so that is four successes. Can the assist get you the one you need? Uh, Warp next. core systems for a focus? Yeah, that would apply. <laughs> Does yeah. indeed. So, Moose, uh, if you can now roll me seven challenge die. And remember, uh, you are dealing with resistance of two here. Okay. Uh... Now, you could spend one of the momentum, in fact, the only momentum you have, to reroll those zeros, or you could spend it to get rid of the two resistance. I'll give a breakthrough, right? Uh, yes, breakthrough. it would give you a breakthrough. I say let's do the momentum for the resistance. Okay. Uh, do you want to spend any threat to uh, reduce the intervals? Hmm. Can't use threat to reroll the zeros? I mean, you could use threat to reroll those zeros, sure. Yeah, I'll do that instead. Okay. Three. Ooh. Ooh. So that is 12 work done, I believe. Uh, also, I have Miracle Worker. Well, uh, let me just do quick napkin math here, but I'm pretty sure that... Uh, because you have Miracle Worker, you did more than five, so that's one success, so Miracle Worker makes that two. You completed the work track, so that's another one. So you literally did this in one shot. Um, so, uh, several things happen at once as uh, you, you know, basically do your chief engineer thing. Uh, emergency power comes back online. Uh, that means that you now have impulse uh, only. Uh, you also have thrusters, but uh, the grav plating comes back online, life support comes back online, and uh, otherwise the crucial systems to keep everybody alive and happy are online now. I like to think that Moose just went over, pulled a cord out, waited 10 seconds, unplugged it back in. I, I mean, you know, it, it is a tired and a tried and true method to fixing all technical problems. I would like to keep, keep the nostalgia of while well, you just unplugged it, plugged it, Anderson then like reworked everything in the back. <laughs> it's all good now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have so thrusters are back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have plating and life support. Life support is back as well. No computers yet though. Nope, no computers. The computer needs to be booted by itself. Um, can I check on Betty? Sure. Is she still up and running? Because she wasn't part tied to the main core. Well, you know, all power got cut, so yes, yeah, she is offline as well. Okay. I'm going to boot her up when it's, when it's appropriate. So we're going to go back to sickbay. Uh, at this point, Doctor, uh, you welcome the return of graph plating because it makes your life a whole lot easier. 
Uh, you have been treating, or are in the process of treating, uh, bumps and bruises, injuries, things of that nature. Uh, if you could roll me a Daring Medicine difficulty one, please. Alrighty. That reminds me, I really need to up this guy's daring. Oh boy. Um, just for momentum's sake, I'm going to burn his point of determination here. Okay. Uh, either all lives deserve saving or best hands in Starfleet in terms of, like, medical care. Sure. Cool, cool. Uh, emergency medicine is a focus? Most definitely. All right. So that is uh, four successes, so you have three momentum. And yeah, uh, Doctor, the, the good news is, is that uh, thankfully, you know, nobody was in the path of the filament as it tore through the hull. Um, the worst injury you've had to treat is a broken leg. Uh, everything else is just standard sort of minor injuries. Uh, other of note, uh, your duplicate, whatever they were, has not shown up again. Alrighty, I'll just, you know, uh, finish patching up some people and, um, I'll run just for kicks and giggles, uh, like a quick scan where my duplicate was to see if somehow that quantum signature is still there. Okay. Uh, roll me a reason science, and because the ship is back up and running, you may have an assist from the ship with a sensor science. Uh, the difficulty here will be a four, though. Alrighty. Um, I will use one of the momentum I just gained to buy a third dice, and I'll just have the assistance from the ship and pray. Alright. This reason science is good. Nope, I don't have a focus for this. Well, that is uh, three successes. Does the ship assist get you anything? Uh, again, the ship is assisting with sensor science. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll let this succeed at cost, but I'm going to take threat for it. Um, okay. So what you learn is that, yeah, there is a, uh, or at least signs of a residual tear uh, in the space-time continuum where your duplicate was. Okay, oh, and for sake of um, argument right now, uh, comms are back up, so you can't communicate with one another. Okay. Um, what the closest thing we have to a chief of science on this ship until we have our XO is probably who, Morris? Uh, Morris or Klein, I would, I would think, yeah. Okay. Well, since this is probably more Klein's bag, uh, I'll pull on my communicator. Um, Master Chief for Lissa to Petty Officer Klein, uh, when you have the chance, I think there's something there might be interesting for you to look at down here. And I'll just reply to myself. Um, I'll be down there when I can. So a uh, dramatically appropriate amount of time later, uh, both Ensign Morris and uh, Klein walk into sickbay. Hmm. Oh boy, I get to talk to myself. This is fun. I know, you set yourself up for this. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> here, let me help. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. Uh, too many people weren't hurt, I hope. Oh, just some relatively minor injuries, some bumps and bruises, um, and I'll kind of point into the area where that tear was. Um, it appears that there's some kind of tear in the space-time continuum here. But there was, for lack of a way of putting it, a, another version of me there just a few minutes ago. Another version of you? Yes, and we talked 
briefly, but it was more of a confused, like, who are you? Who are you? Sort of situation. Um, Officer Klein, do you think this could be related to uh, what we s- scanned on the bridge? Um, it certainly could be. Uh, I assume we also have the results of that scan with us. Uh, you would, yes. But uh, as you guys are talking, I'm going to spend some thread here. All of you have the damnedest sense of deja vu, like you've had this exact conversation before. Officer Klein, do you... Wait, what? I... And he's going to, like, run over to where that was and do a scan. Okay. Gonna... I will assist. All right. It's going to be a uh, reason science uh, difficulty four, and uh, you may assist him, Morris. I shall do so. Uh, quantum mechanics is a focus here. Most definitely. Okay. Um. So let me head, and I'll use one of our momentum to get a third die. All right. Complication. Great. Uh, we knew what was the difficulty again? Four. Four. Uh, we did not succeed. Yes. Yeah. So the complication is uh, Klein. When you go up and start scanning, uh, everyone else. So for Liza and Morris, uh, you seen Klein uh, walk up to the thing, the the space where the duplicate was scanned, and then it's almost like you blink and he's back where Morris was, and he steps forward and scans. And then he drops back, and then he scans again. And this just keeps repeating until I one grab of you him. does something. You grab him. It breaks the loop. And, uh, Klein, you have not scanned that area yet. Um, I'll go over there and scan? If... Uh, you've done that, like, five times now. Um, and he also just kind of get... tilts his head. I stopped you this time. Um, maybe from a distance... I... Okay? And I guess he'll try that. Okay. Uh, just roll me a challenge die here. Uh, let's see how well uh, you do there. If you roll an effect, uh, you'll start looping again. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're not able to get any solid, coherent readings, but uh, hey, you're not looping. Uh, scans are inconclusive from this um <sighs> perhaps if we triangulate um with our tricorders get scans from different angles all at once oh that's an option we certainly have uh and some more master t4 liza if you would all right so, uh, I'm going to say you can get one more attempt at this, but since it is your second time trying it, it's going to be a difficulty five. Alrighty. So, same difficulty... Oh, yeah, I said difficulty five. Okay. Yep, difficulty five, still a reason science. Alright. Um, I'll have Klein lead this, and I'll use momentum to get a third die again. Oh boy. Yeah, this is gonna work. I'll just Sensor science, right? Or is this more like for Lizzo's also assisting rather than the ship assisting? Uh I would say that the uh it doesn't matter who assists because I'm only seeing two successes and you need five. So Yeah. I'll just have for Lizzo do it. Klein doesn't have any or this is is this Klein's first introduction? Uh I gave him a different I, I just gave him a talent, like nothing that would help here. Okay. So he doesn't have any values? Nope. Nope. Mm. He does have the walking encyclopedia talent, no. 
So, bad news is, again, you're just not able to get anything coherent. Um, but, uh, as you continue to try and figure out what the hell is going on there, uh, we go back to main engineering, where uh, most of the uh, engineering quote-unquote nerds have returned to engineering and are in the process of booting back up the warp core. Uh, Jensen walks in a few moments uh, into this process and says, uh... Lieutenant, can I can I have a word real quick? He turns out look like it's Chief. Remember, Chief. Uh, of course, sir. Uh, still, I need a minute. Yeah, he'll head on over. Like, what's up? So remember that whole antimatter storage pod thing that I mentioned? Yeah. Uh, I'm, of course, not really an expert on quantum physics, but it's almost like a tear in reality. Uh, almost like it's it's disrupting the space-time continuum. And what does it have to do with the pods? Well, I, I think the proximity of the filament with the pods is what's causing this tear, so... I guess the longer we stay here, the worse it's going to get. And, you know, we should probably try and move as soon as possible. All right. Go to the sensor array, make sure it's intact. And I'm going to boot up the computer so we can get an accurate reading and help with Helm. Uh, yes, sir. She runs off to go check the sensors. And Muth will head to Betty. All right. So, uh, you know, it's literally now that you have power back, it's just a matter of pushing a button and turning it literally back on. Uh, so you have computers back now. Well, so Betty's still isolated from the system. He's mm -hmm. made mention that uh, he wanted to have a disconnect, uh, or a connector, sorry, uh, for Betty to the rest of the ship. Mm -hmm. so he's going to connect her to the rest of the ship. All right, and what are you doing with that? Uh, he wants Betty to take over all functions. Okay. All functions of uh, what the t core typically do. Um, because since she's, you know, her own design, uh, yeah, you know, she, she has a little, she has, she, she has some fuzzy logic. It's a way to help. Okay. Narratively. Uh, I will say, uh, if you, well, you don't have any momentum, hmm. uh, roll me a control or daring engineering difficulty one, and we'll see what happens. Uh, and the ship explodes. <laughs> and computer expertise, right? Sure, yeah, because you are using the computers for this one. And that gives me an extra dice... And experimental computer. Oof. Yeah. All right. So, question for you. Uh huh. I still have a spotlight and a milestone save because that's from the arc, right? Uh, yeah. Do you are you trying to use the milestone here to get that yeah. determination? Yeah. All right. Well, you may certainly uh, do so. It's just a reroll of all of it. Reroll as many as you want. Let's re-roll all of it. Yeah. Wow. wow. No. Well, uh, the good news is you got three successes. The bad news is that is a complication. Uh, so here's the problem. Uh, so, you know, Betty does boot online and starts feeding data to the people on the bridge. However, the first thing you notice is that there is a... Uh, degradation of Betty's computer core and what that's going to mean is that until Betty is completely overhauled uh, all tasks that rely on Betty and right now that means everything on the ship that involves a main computer uh, the complication range is going to be a 17 to 20 <laughs> worth it <laughs> but yeah uh, go ahead and take your momentum and uh Betty is able to at least start beginning uh, transferring data to uh, Helm if someone on, at the Helm wants to try and back you away from this filament, but that's the situation you find yourselves in at the moment. That sounds like the kind of thing I might do, but 
I, can I propose something? Sure. So we've got the expanded connectivity talent, right? Mm-hmm. Is that... Perhaps that's because of Betty? Yeah, I could see that. Where are you going with it, though? Um... Oh, nothing, like, mechanical. I just, like, I was always wondering, like, logistically. And I think, like, you know, she's she's basically our just really smart Siri or something. I, I don't... You you know more Betty better than I do, Moose. It's kind of your thing. But I don't know. Is that, I mean, I, is that I think reason? that is an excellent fluff reason, yeah. Betty right. also has the ability, as, like, the first computer uh, program to do this, um, she can talk. But you have to go at a terminal that's interfaced with her. I can do it. Like the old cool. TOS computer. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh. Alright, so do y'all need me to fly? Yes. Alright, I guess if... If you twist my arm. <laughs> I don't know why you're going to have to med bay to do some scans, buddy. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, back on the bridge as uh, everyone returns. Uh, again, uh, Morris, you are given the arduous task of flying out of here. And uh, the way this is going to work is it's going to be another extended task. Uh, it is going to be a very difficult one, though. Uh, the work track is going to be a 14. The magnitude is going to be a 4. Mm, excuse me. Uh, the difficulty is also going to be a 4. And the uh, resistance is going to be a 1. And uh, the good news is that there are no intervals attached to this. Uh, but if you mess up, uh, I will inflict one breach to a random system. Meaning if you roll a complication kind of thing. Um, right. So you are going to be doing a daring and con and the ship will be assisting you with a computers and con. Okay. Would I be able to first take a moment to um, kind of flex my navigator skills and plot a course in a, like a, a plane with a computer? I would say you can. I just have to remember what task plot a course involves. I want to say control con. Uh, plot course. This is a reason con assisted by the ship's computers con with a difficulty of three. If successful, the next task attempted by the helmsman reduces in difficulty by one. And you can spend one... No, you can spend two momentum to decrease the difficulty by one. So a two for one ratio. And you can do that as many times as you like. Okay. And I believe you have two momentum at the moment. We do? You should, yeah, because you, you have it from Bruce? earlier. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, well, I had used it on Klein stuff. Did we get more from Moose, or...? No, he failed at his. Oh, my no, he had difficulty one. Yeah, so you oh, should okay. have the two. Oh. My bad. Oh, we had the complication. Yeah. Okay, um... And you said that the ship is assisting here? Yep. Uh, if you're plotting a course, it is a sensor's... No, it's a computer's con for the ship. Right. Um, so I do have some saved milestones. I think I might want to use one here for determination. Okay. So I will mark that I have one fewer saved milestone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it's the one from our very first mission when I had to pilot the shuttle in. Okay. Um... And so I'm using that to buy die with two success, and then I think that should be it. I'm not going to buy more than that. Okay. And you said it was computers con for the computers ship? Computers con for the ship, yep. Okay. All right, well, that's uh, three successes, which is all you need, uh, but I do need to see the ship. All right. Good news uh, is that those are not complications. I would like to, though. Um, because the computer's assisted, I would like to re-roll one of my dice. All right, go for it. Oh, wait. Does that have the increased complication range? Yep, everything that involves the ship's computers has the increased complication range. Hmm. 
we're okay though in that regard because it was seventeen to twenty. Yep. Okay. Okay, so I I I would just be fishing for momentum here then. Um, yeah. and you said it's it's two momentum to make the task easier. Uh, yeah. So because you've already succeeded, um, it's reduced by one. Uh, but if you spend two momentum, it'll go down by two. I think that's worth it. What do y'all think? Yeah, I think in this case, it most certainly is. All right, yeah, let's do that. All right. So... And... Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to re-roll still, or are you just going to... No, uh, well, hmm. So it's what? So one in... F that's a... F that's a... That's a that's a 20% chance that we get a uh, complication. I don't I don't think that's worth one momentum, so I'm not going to fish here. Okay. All right, so, uh, Morris, between yourself and the computer, even though the computer is kind of fritzy at the moment, uh, you are able to at least plot a course, which should make it rather easier for you to extricate yourself from the quantum filament without causing any further damage. Uh, mm -hmm. However, it is now time to actually do the extended task. So the starting difficulty uh, for this first attempt is going to be a two, but it will go back up after this task, success or fail. Right. Um, so again, it um, is a daring con for you and a computer's con for the ship. Okay. Uh, are y'all cool if I give him one threat here? Sure. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do daring con. Hopefully that'll turn into momentum. All right, three successes. Go ahead and roll your untapped potential before you forget. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, we both get a thing. Yay. And then, yeah, just need to see ship. Ship is a 14. You're good. All right, um, so let's see. You can roll six challenge dice. I will roll six challenge dice. All right, so right now you're doing a grand total of two work. Hmm. I think I... Actually, I'm fine with that. Because there's no time, time constraint here, so I'm actually kind of fine with that. Okay. Oh, but it's gonna go. It's gonna go right back up to up to four. Up yes. Up to four again. Well, since um, you're successful, would it go down to three, or is that no? Not it's work? only when you have a breakthrough. Oh. So I could re-roll three of these dice. I would need at least two of them to be twos. I think. You could always just either a spend the momentum or give them the thread to get shave the resistance off, so we have a better chance. Maybe we do one of each. It looks like mm -hmm. I'm too much threat while we're right, going through the quantum just, hole. Yeah, we've just, given him, what, we've just given him three, th two threat. Can I spawn yeah. some Dominion ships on us? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Alright, I think, I think I'm just going to re-roll these three challenge dice. Alright. So that's five. All right, and that's all you need for a breakthrough, which means the difficulty goes down to a three. Uh, the magnitude goes down to a three. And yeah, uh, the good news is you start to move the ship and uh, nothing, no alarms begin blaring. Uh, it's almost like if, you know, you wrap a piece of metal around a pole and you just begin to pull the metal away. Um, you know, you're, you're able to very carefully begin moving the ship away from the filament. Um, so you've made some good progress so far. However, I'm going to spend some threat. And uh, I'm going to say that uh, all of that work is negated uh, because the filament begins moving with the ship. Now, this doesn't get rid of your difficulty or your magnitude decrease, but it does kind of kill all the work you had done. But, but we do still have one breakthrough, right? You do have the one breakthrough, yes. Okay. All right. Um, I guess let's let's do it again. Um, 
thinking if I want to give one threat for one die. You said if there's a, a failure on the task, though, it's going to be real bad, I think is what GM said, right? I mean, oh, it's I think implied. He's a complication. It'd be even worse, obviously. Mm. Yeah, you definitely don't want a complication here. Because complication are, are we able a to assist at all, or uh, no? This is purely Morris and the computer, unfortunately. Uh, well, I will say that if you have, well, you're not the first officer, like the actual first officer role, unfortunately, um, because first officers and captains can give their determination, um, and they also can use the like advise or what is it the uh, the the direct action. But since you're not technically either. You know, I'm acting. I mean, I could, I could use another determination. It just slows down my advancement, which is not the end of the world. Uh, um, I have the spirit of discovery talent. Doesn't that uh, doesn't that mean you spend your determination and they get what three momentum? Three momentum, yeah. That seems good. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know how to insert to do that. Yeah, you just uh, you just tell me that uh, you tell him to do better, and here's three momentum. Okay, hey, you got this. Just remember, it, it's just like fighting Vulcans, right? You zig, we zag, we'll fire it together, and I'll use risk is our business for value. Sure. <laughs> to determination, give you three momentum. All right. All momentum. right. Um. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to spend one and roll three dice. Okay. So it's, uh, what, Reason Con or Control Con? Daring Con. Daring Con. Ah, all right. Well, there's the three successes you need if someone could not roll a complication on the ship. All right, and uh, same thing, Computers Con? Yep. All righty. That is not a complication. Yeah, that's all you need. So yeah, go ahead and roll me another six challenge die, please. All right, I mean, that is another five, which means uh, it is indeed another breakthrough, which takes the difficulty and magnitude down to a two. Uh, let's see. So uh, I'm going to, spay, eh, going to say that as you uh, continue to move the ship away, uh, what happens is... Uh, all of you on the bridge, uh, for a moment, you see what look to be like ghosts or after images of yourself. Uh, as you move your limbs and you move about, there's sort of these ghostly after images that uh, sort of trail in your wake. Uh, and it is the probably very unnerving. Um, and you also hear uh, discordant voices. They, they sort of sound like your own, but they're almost speaking in harmony or over one another, and it's it's really hard to... To figure out what's going on here, um, but the sensation does stop after about thirty seconds. Hmm. All right, I'll roll again. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work, Ensign. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna buy another die. Okay. I think I say those words very often. <laughs> Then I'm gonna give you threat. Oh, oh boy! Don't don't worry about it. I can re-roll it, but just don't give me another one. <laughs> oh, remember, uh, you need to roll uh, untapped potential for the last one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, give us some threat. That's Ooh. two momentum. Nice. Okay. And roll untapped for this one, and then if someone can get computers and con for the ship. Well, I think I only get it... Oh, that is a successful mm -hmm. one. Okay. Alright, All right, I'll use I'll use technical expertise to re-roll the complication. Alright. Get a mo point of momentum, and yeah. Go ahead and roll me six challenge die. I'm taking my sweet time. Um, let's... 
just spend two momentum, one to get rid of resistance, the other to add a extra point of work. All right. Okay. That should be five, right? Yep, that should be five. All right, so I'm going to say, uh, as uh, you've almost gotten yourself out of this, uh, this filament, uh, down in engineering... Uh, Moose and uh, Anderson, you're noticing that the uh, harmonic frequency of the warp core has begun to shift and that uh, it is beginning to resonate with the quantum filament. Okay. Um, I want to try and modulate the frequency so it... Uh can't shift with it if because it changes too much. I want to change the variance so it keeps going back and forth within uh, tolerance of the engines. Alright, I need you to roll me a daring engineering uh, difficulty 4 uh, complication range I'll just spend thread here let's make it a 16 to 20. Can Anderson help? Anderson can definitely help. I have warp core system. Uh yeah, warp core mechanics as well. Uh, well okay. Uh, it's okay if I burn the last two momentum and give you a threat? Sure. Uh, I will say, because what you said, the complication range was 16 to 20. Mm hmm. Uh, Anderson's role is a complication. Good catch. How do you Wait, actually like, see the number that got rolled? Eh, just uh, just over. hover it over the. You just hover it over that zero or one. It'll be in like the bottom left. That's four oh, dice. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're not using the computer for this, or are we using the computer for this? Nope. This is uh, this is purely uh, warp core that no. is being fixed. So thankfully, the computer is not involved. <laughs> yeah. Five oh. successes. So you get one momentum. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, you are, of course, able to modulate the frequency and stop it resonating with the quantum filament. However, uh, I am going to say with that complication, as promised, you will take a breach to structure, which brings you up to three, unfortunately, which means I now have to roll a challenge dice. And if I roll an effect, someone is injured. Someone is injured. Uh, oh we'll just go with uh, top down. I'm going to roll a 1d4. Who's number two? Uh, Mr. Rollins. Bro. Rollins, uh, you're on the bridge. Uh, you know, everything's going great. And then the next thing you know, uh, you're on the floor. The captain's chair is in pieces. And uh, the fire extinguishing systems are putting out a uh, ex the remnants of an explosion slash uh, burst of fire where the chair used to be. Not the chair. And uh, until uh, you have until the end of the scene, but Rollins is considered to be lethally injured. Oh boy. There's no rolls. Nope, you are just, uh, that that's sort of what the effect roll is. You are just lethally injured. That unfortunately, already... you don't have enough momentum to avoid the injury. You could spend determination, yeah. but if you took another injury with the determination spend, you would be dead dead. Med medic. Uh, Klein will. I assume we have the turbo lift working again. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Klein's gonna pick him up to the best of his ability, take him to the turbo lift, and take him to sick bay. All right. I need you to roll me a fitness con, please, because Rollins is a big dude. Uh, roll me a fitness oh, con difficulty one. Of course, you have the bridge. Right. I, 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 sir. Um, he doesn't. Uh, get a momentum. Do I? Do I know what caused that breach just now? Yes. Uh, the it was almost like a magnet. The warp core momentarily pulled the uh, quantum filament back into the ship, uh, which does mean that uh, you know breach happened. Uh, the good news is that your um. Your your task here is still just a difficulty one, um, but you know, again, if you roll any complications, another breach. 
Right. Um, okay, I'm going to roll here. I'm not going to buy any extra dice. Okay. That I don't say often. Um, well, you know what, though? I can earn more if I do. <laughs> I'm going to do it, yeah. <laughs> be true Be true to who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a die. Okay. And I will remember to roll... Untapped potential. All right, and, and I happens. just need to see a computer's con from the ship. And as long as it's not a complication, I believe you're home free. Computer's con. Fine. Missed it by one. You're good. All right. Um, did we already get the two momentum? Uh, yeah. yes. So you're at three. Uh, and as long as you roll at least three work here, uh, you complete the task. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's enough. All right. So, uh, Morris, you are able to fully disengage yourselves from the quantum filament. And uh, yep. down the starboard side is a literal tear in the ship, almost like someone took a piece of paper and ripped it. Uh, but the good news is emergency bulkheads have come into place, force fields are running, and... Oh, there's the whole fact that the captain's chair is now gone, so you're going to have to figure out how to explain that one. The first time I get the bridge, and I don't even get to step <laughs> the chair. Um, I'm going to make sure I put a lot of distance between us and the filament, being super vigilant that we don't find another. Okay. Or find more of this same one. Fair. Right, and we're just going to move to sick bay, uh, where Doctor uh, in steps uh, one Klein, uh, carrying a injured, uh, battered and bruised Lieutenant Rollins. He kind of looks and sees him. All right, I set him down. We'll have to get him into. Is it like something that requires surgery? I'm assuming. Well, uh, if you roll or... me a daring medicine at a difficulty of one, he will be stabilized. Okay. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember how this is here. Uh, I have three saved milestones from before. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do with them is, because uh, I think we can use it three to reduce our, uh, to reduce an attribute and then bump another attribute up by one. Yep. Um, I'm going to use the three I have to, we'll say... I'll reduce my presence to nine, and then bump my daring to eight. Okay. If that's and a little bit better of a chance. Okay. Um, I will. I'll use um. Uh, I'm scared out of my mind right now. So I'll use all three momentum to buy two dice. Okay. Man, daring medicine. Complication, but uh, with the oh, two momentum you just got, you could buy off that complication. Yeah, I'm doing that. Right. Yes, please. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Doc, you're able to patch up Rollins, get him stabilized. Uh, you know, he'll probably be a little uh, ragged around the edges for a little bit, but he should recover, no problem. All right, Petty Officer, thank you for bringing him here. Uh, Lieutenant, I think you're going to stay here for a while to make sure you're stable. All right. Just give me some... Uh stations that I can keep an eye on things. Is there any way like I could transfer like some sort of maybe a tactical system kind of thing to one of the panels down here? Yeah, you know, especially because you have expanded connectivity, you could easily do that. Alright, I'll go ahead and do that and give him something to do while he's in here. Alright. And back up on the bridge, uh, you know. Uh, you're sailing in the clear now. Uh, out of curiosity, would you be heading for nearest Stardock, or what's what's your play here? What was our destination before? Uh, your destination was uh, somewhere to the galactic west of uh, 
of uh, Vulcan. You didn't really have a goal in mind, but uh, you are about uh, a week's travel away from Vulcan, which is the nearest star dock. So, so we were basically doing the third star on the left? Yeah, basically. Okay. Hmm. Is there... Is there another star base in the direction we're currently headed? Uh, no. The closest one is going to be Vulcan, because, again, this is the era where Starfleet hasn't really built a whole lot of outposts yet, so you're right, kind of reliant right. on the core worlds. Alright, I'm turning this ship around. Alright. And as you do, uh, you hear some pounding, and finally the door to the captain's ready room opens, and out steps Captain Voss, and he says... Damn it, I've been stuck in there for hours. What the hell's going... What happened to my chair? Uh, you'll have to pick that up with Lieutenant Rollins, sir. <sighs> but I assure you, um, Doctor tells me he's fine. He just looks despondent at the pieces of his chair. And, uh, you know what? I tell you what, uh, even though it's a short session, uh, let's go ahead and call it there. Because anything further, I think, is going to require the attention of both the captain and your potential XO. All right, so players, uh, stick around for a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, uh, thank you much, so much for watching, and see you later. Bye-bye.